When the people of the Muslims they emigrated from Abyssinia back to Medina, the Rasulullah when he saw the Sahaba coming back, he was so happy. The Prophet asked them, tell me some of the most amazing things you saw in Abyssinia. Now the youth right away, they said, Ya Amir Rasulullah, we got something amazing for you. So he said, okay, go ahead, tell me. He said, Ya Rasulullah, one time there was an old lady who was a nun. That nun was holding a qulla upon her head. She was ha having like a big jar of water. As she was walking, one of the youngsters from that Abyssinia area, he placed his hand in between the shoulders and then pushed her. So then she fell on her knees and the qulla fell and what happened? It broke. That lady, what, what afterwards, what, what she did is stand up and turn to him. And she said, Sata'lamu ya ghudar, O traitor, O loser, you will know. When Allah puts the kursi and He gathers the first of creation and the end of the creation, i.e. Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And then on that day when the hands and the legs will speak and every part of your body will say what you have done, you will know on that day my case and your case and how I'll get my right back. Prophet said, Sadaqat, Sadaqat. She said the truth, she said the truth. Definitely, Allah will never let go of someone who was oppressed for whatever goes around, basically, comes around. What's the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can go exactly with this? Ad-Dayyan. The Ad-Dayyan is the one who recompenses. We read every time, at least 17 times a day, at least, Maliki Yawmiddin, the day of recompense. Now, whether you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim, whether it was a male or a female, young or old, Allah is Ad-Dayyan, whatever goes around, comes around. Now, go back in detail. Let me mention a hadith to you to understand this. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, whoever allows someone and makes someone go through difficulty, Allah will make that person who initiated that difficulty to go through a difficulty not in dunya, rather in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And wallahi, the biggest difficulty in dunya is nothing close to the smallest difficulty in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So pay attention for the students that give a hard time to their teacher. They think they're funny and etc. For the one who lies to their boss, you will be faced a lot of difficulty on Yom Al Qiyamah. We ask Allah's refuge on that day. We ask Allah to make us under the shade of Allah when there's no shade except the shade of Allah, i.e., the throne of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Brothers and sisters, the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is full of this understanding. Wallahi, one of the fastest ways to gain Allah's happiness is when you make other people happy, and one of the fastest ways to gain Allah's anger is when you anger other people. Look at this hadith and depending on you as a person, Rasulullah said, be righteous to your parents and your children will be righteous to you. Even though with this being mentioned, you see real stories in our lives. Number one, there's a man who was walking in the park along with his son and they were talking back and forth until that son became so angry and so was the father. In the heat of the conversation, the son, what did he do? He looked at his father in the park and he slapped his own father. He slapped him. So some Muslims were around, what did they do? They went and they jumped this boy. How can you do this to your father? So then when the people jumped him, they were so rude to him, guess what the father said? He told all the people, back off, move away, leave him alone. Why? We're trying to defend you. Leave him alone. Why? For Wallahi, when I was young, I slapped my own father in that same place. Wallah, every time you go to your parents, no matter how old you may be, even if your parents are dead, how was your attitude towards making dua for them? Look at this other story, in one time there was a father and his wife, a grandfather and a grandson. That grandfather, when he was married, he had his own house with a maid and a driver. This was in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Eventually that grandmother has passed away, then that grandfather didn't want to stay home alone, so he moved to his own son's house. And that grandfather, you know, was picking on everything. So what happened? The wife told her husband, you, you know what, I'm sick of this. Enough is enough. You either pick me or you pick your own father. A wise man tries to reconcile between them. And if he was forced to make one last decision, he would choose who? 
definitely his father over a billion women. Is that clear? But this man, without even thinking, without even trying to reconcile, he chose his wife over his father. For those that know the houses in Saudi Arabia, even the poor people in Saudi Arabia, they have drivers and they have maids. So there was a small room outside the house. They're all fenced. And then he allowed the father to sit in that one small room where the driver used to sit. He said, you know what, Baba, you stay in that place. I will bring you the food and whatever you want. So that father feeling that he has no word and he does not have the audacity to say, how can you do that to me? Because he already feels he's a burden. So he doesn't want to argue. So he feels very subhanAllah humiliated. He accepts it. So he goes to that small room. When the father goes there, they send the maid to send the food to him. SubhanAllah. And the connection is cut. Now that wife is happy. I'm home alone. I'm the princess of the house, etc. Your grandfather or your father is no longer here. And sometimes as an old man, he, what happens? He would break the plates or the cups. She says, you know what? From now on, we will give him one same plastic plate. And that husband, quiet. Then eventually what happened? The maid goes into that room. Lo and behold, the grandfather was found dead. Then she rushes back to the house and she tells her to the father and the mother, you know what, grandpa has died, etc. So the son rushes there and he feels so grossed out. This tells you how he hardly ever went there. He felt so grossed out for his underclothing was on the side here and there. And he told the people, don't even touch this. Khalas. Just like put it all in a garbage bag and throw it away. Who walked in? The grandson. The grandson, while he was walking in and running, he went and grabbed what? The plate. The father yelled at him, leave that plate, leave it, it's disgusting, it's filthy. He said, Baba, no, no, I want it. And he held it tight, let it go. You don't, you don't know how disgusting that plate is. It has been used forever. He said, why are you insisting you want it? He said, Ya Baba, look how innocent, subhanAllah. Ya Baba, when you get older, I can feed you on that same plate. That father was so touched by it, he starts to cry and he pushed everybody away and remembering his father and how rude he was to him and how unjust he was to him and how Rasulullah said, be righteous to your parents and your children be righteous to you but whatever goes around comes around and his own son, before even the father became old, look why he told him back. The sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dunya and in akhirah. Whatever you do good, you will find the consequences. Whatever bad that you do, you will face the consequences. That's why Umar al Khattab said, judge yourself, hold yourself accountable before the day comes where you are held accountable. One time a guy was driving and there's a person right beside him. They were chit-chatting back and forth, back and forth. As they were driving, what happened? They smacked the car right in front of them. That brother was so worried and so anxious and almost depressed. Why? The insurance will go up. The cops are going to come. I'll be ticketed. And how can I tell my parents? Etc. Etc. When he left the car to talk to the car in front of him, that which he hit, that man was in front. He walked and he looked at the rear of the car. He said, you know what? Don't worry about it. It's fine. So that man who hit the car, went back to the car, his friend's like, ah, Alhamdulillah. Then that man started to cry, who was driving. He's like, why are you crying? He says, Wallahi al-Azim, on that same street, I was on the front and a car behind came and smacked me and smashed the car from the back. He came off the car, he saw the car behind him was a father, a wife and a family. They were going on a vacation. So he said, I told them, don't worry about it. And look how when that day now he hits another car, that man told him, don't worry about it. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we truly as Muslims, 100% believe in this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh, you have said, I believe with your tongue and iman has not been fully installed in your heart. Do not backbite your brothers and sisters. And don't follow their faults. Why? What will happen if I do so? For wallahi, whoever follows the faults of their brother and sister, Allah will search for your faults. And whoever Allah searches for their faults, but will Allah ever fail finding faults in you? Never. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will expose that person, even in that sin that they were doing, right in the middle of the house. Because Allah subhanahu doesn't allow that to happen. You try to spy on them, you try to do this to them, Allah subhanahu will allow you to be exposed. Billah. Wallah, you hear this hadith right here. Rasulullah said, So Allah resurrects all the people, you have nothing with you. No wallet, no cell phone, no shirt, absolutely nothing. 
then Rasulullah Sallallahu says, Allah will call out loud that the furthest person will hear it just as clear as the one standing right in the front. Allah says, Ana al Malik, Ana Dayyan. This is authentic. Then he says, Wallahi, this sentence is mind blowing. He says, It is not befitting for anyone to go to Jannah while that person owes something to one who is going to Jahannam. You're the people of Jannah. While you owe someone who's a kafir, you wrong them, you oppress them, you will have to give them the right back, even though they're going to Jahannam. And then Allah says, and it's not befitting, and it's not proper that those that go to hellfire, while they owe something to those who are going to Jannah. Then the hadith continues and says, the Sahaba said, how can we give the right back? And we have nothing with us. Then the Prophet said two words, bil hasanati was sayyat. That's the only worthy currency on that day. It was not your money, it was the money you donated. This hadith as well is absolutely gorgeous. In authentic hadith, Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As, he says, when Yawm al-Qiyamah comes, Allah resurrects who? Every living thing. So if some people wonder, are the animals going to come Yawm al-Qiyamah? Absolutely. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the animal rights on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Then after the Qasas is completed, Allah says, all animals turn into dust. And that time what happens? The Kafir says, I wish I was dust, i.e. I wish I was an animal. So Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, do you know who's a bankrupt? The Sahaba says the one has no money, no assets, etc. Then Rasulullah says the real bankrupt is the one who comes Yawm Al Qiyamah. That person is practicing brother, practicing sister externally and the way we look at them. Is the one who used to pray, used to give zakah and used to fast. That man comes Yawm Al Qiyamah. However, that person used to curse the other person, used to backbite, used to talk trash. And they used to accuse people's honor. And then the Prophet moves on. And then that person who stole the money, what will happen? The people whom he wronged, Allah Adayyan will allow that everyone who was wronged to seek the right back from that person who was practicing. And he says, remember me in university? 10, 15 years ago, in high school in grade 10, you used to make fun of my height, you used to make fun of my, my pimples on my face, the way my ears looked, the way my nose looked, remember? I don't remember, I don't even know your name. Regardless, look at your book. The book says exactly what you've done. So what do you want from me? Give me your hasanat. Then another person comes, and another person comes. And another person comes, every time you curse someone, you talk trash about them, you're gossiping, you stole someone's money, you took the money of the orphan, whatever you may, you have, may have done, that person comes back. Then when all the hasanat are gone, everything is done. Yalla go! Then what happens? Allah orders, it's not done. That person has a right. I have no hasanat. Then let that other person give you his sayyat. Sayyad go up and up and up after they were so practicing salah, siyam and zakah. Then the Prophet said, then that person is thrown into Jahannam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Dayyan to overlook our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to remember, to hold ourselves accountable. May Allah subhanahu wa reward you all. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.